everybody. It is Friday, August 16th, and I thought before the school year really got underway, I'd pop in and do a little short uh, podcast. I think that may be the only way to get podcasts done during the busy school year is to try to keep them short and brief whenever I have some finished objects to share with you. So I have some finished objects, socks, 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 so a lot of socks to talk about, and um, I have a few works in progress that I can talk about, and then that'll be it, because next week school starts um, for teachers, and then on the 27th, we'll be back with our students. So, there's a lot of work that has to happen next week and then going forward. And you might see me swatting at stuff because there are some mosquitoes flying around me, which is very annoying. It is rather nice outside. And I've been in the building all day, and so I thought I'd just come out here for a short bit. So, quick life recap. My eldest son got married on July 28th, and it was beautiful. It went as you know as well as could be expected. Um, bride was lovely. Everybody did a great job, did what they were supposed to do when they were supposed to do it. It was down at our pond, and the rain held off so that we had a beautiful sunny day for the wedding. Um, it was hot, but it wasn't as hot as it could be here in the southern United States, so that was great. And so they've been off on their honeymoon and are back, and my husband's, uh, my eldest son's uh, new wife is a teacher, and she's already back at school because she does year-round uh, school. So they're settling into married life, and so that's, that's fabulous. Uh, my middle son and his girlfriend have... Um, gone off to university for their senior year and are getting settled in there. Um, so it's just back to the three of us, my husband, myself, and my youngest son, and we're heading into his senior year of high school, so it's going to be a busy um, senior year for him. We did have um, some unfortunate news about my grandmother, who um, had a, a big part in raising me. Um, this is the grandmother who taught me to sew and to cook. Um, not the grandmother that taught me to knit. She passed away some years ago. But my grandmother is very ill. And so right after the wedding, jumped in the car with my youngest son. Had an epic car battle on the way down there um, that I won't get into, but it was... It was just not, you know, middle of nowhere, Alabama, your car dies, and yeah, it was it was epic. But we eventually got safely to Texas, uh, spent some time with my grandmother while she was still aware and could share memories and we could talk, um, and said the things we needed to say, um, and then we headed on home to get back and ready for school. Um, during that trip, I did have some time to do some knitting. Um, there's not a whole lot, um, when you're sitting in a nursing home, um, you have plenty of time to knit when, when your grandmother is sleeping. And um, she's still hanging in there, but um, she's 97, and it's expected that um, it's, it's not long before she passes away. So um, that's been much on my mind, a lot of communication back and forth with Texas. Um, but we are glad we got to go down there and spend a lot of time with her. My husband flew out as well um, after doing some work that he had to do and joined us and the three of us um, had a lovely time together. So that will be um, an important memory for all of us. And now we come back and we do our best to get ready for the school year. Um, but that did you know, being gone for so long did put me a little bit off track. Um, came back and there was still stuff to clean up from the wedding. And I think there's a long list of summer want-to-dos that didn't get done. And school year's here, but that's just life. So I will share with you my finished objects. So last time, I believe I just had half objects, but I have two nicely finished berries and cream socks now done uh, this was my first attempt at an afterthought heel um, for an adult sock so I wanted to test it out was thrilled with the fit and how it worked um, I chose to do the 
leave the thread, you know, weave a, th a, a scrap piece of yarn through um, to mark the heel, and that works really well for me. I don't um, mind um, having to pick out the thread later. Um, I will say that it's really important that you choose the right yarn for that. Um, in this case, I chose something that had a section, it was a multicolored strand of yarn, but it had a section of blue in it, which kind of blended a little too well with a few stitches here, and I regretted that later, but um, a nice contrasting color and a very smooth kind of yarn would be the ideal thing for the afterthought heel if that's the route you're going to go. I do have everything on my Ravelry page. You can find me on Ravelry as The Flock, uh, T-H-E-F-L-O-C-K. And so all of the details are there, but basically I did these toe up and I used um, the vanilla latte pattern across the, um, the foot and, and the upper part of the sock, which is basically just a rib pattern. That's a free pattern on Ravelry. And then I did an afterthought heel and I think they came out very scrumptious. The yarn is... Uh, by Into the World that I purchased um, on my first and only trip so far to Rhinebeck, uh, which was last fall. So I'm thrilled that um, I put some yarn into my stash and then immediately took care of it. So I did that, finished these socks, and that confirmed that the Afterthought heel would work and fit well on me. So then I wanted to work on my other pair of socks that I started this summer, but the holdup was that I hadn't finished the stripey set yet. So this is um, a pair of socks that I knit for myself. I had also knit a pair of these for my husband as well. So he's got some socks just like this, uh, longer and bigger, and with the toe in the, um, this is a crazy Zauber ball. Um, and I think the, I think the colorway is called Erbst Wind or something like that, but it's on my Ravelry page. Um, and then this is a gray, yarn from Coop Knits Soxia that um, I bought to pair up with the stripes because that way I figured I could get this crazy yarn to make some uh, matchy matchy socks for the husband and myself. My husband actually bought the Zauber Ball for me um, on a trip to the Netherlands so it was um, it was a gift to me from him that he brought back when he was on a work trip and so then I thought, well, that'll be fun. I'll try to make some socks um, for him and myself out of that yarn. Um, I saw an inspiration photo on Ravelry somewhere, and that is linked in both um, my husband's socks and my socks, where a person had done the same thing with a different color Zauber Ball. So I really like that striped effect. And I did the... And when you knit the stripes... Um, I did the kind of jog where the first round you just knit the color and on the second round, the very first stitch of the second round, you bring the loop up from the bottom and knit that together so that you have sort of a jogless, um, you're hoping to have jogless stripes. Um, these socks have not been blocked, but I think you can see that it's not a perfect um, system. They, there is still a jog there, but I think with blocking it improves it quite a bit um, so that it looks like a straight stripe compared to this side, um, which doesn't have that join in it. So what I did think of ahead of time to do though is to make sure that the place where the yarn jogs a little bit um, I have them on opposite sides. So if I'm wearing the socks, I can have a nice outer face and an inner face that I think when blocked won't be so won't be so bad. You can see that if I um, but still has the potential to be a little bit less than perfect. So these are my socks. They're obviously coordinating, but not matchy matchy because I didn't you know I was trying to get four socks out of the Zauber ball. Um, so I wasn't going to waste yarn trying to match up the colors. And I like it that way. This starts out blue, has a bluish heel, and then gets into the reds and purples. Whereas this one is more red with some light blue, and it ends in some heathery kind of reds and blue. So it's, it's a fun way to see the entire set of potential stripes that that Zauber ball could produce. 
and I know that it's a little bit difficult maybe to see on the screen, so I will try to um, insert a picture if I can figure out how to do that. But I wanted the gray yarn that was left over from these socks to make afterthought heels for another pair of socks. And I didn't know, I, I figured I'd have enough, but my concern was what if I didn't? And then I'd be stuck with one sock here and I'd have, you know, although with the gray, I'm pretty sure my local yarn shop carries this consistently. Um, and it's not, it, a different dye lot probably wouldn't make a difference with this gray. But I figured, also motivation-wise, that I needed to finish this pair before I finished the last pair I'm going to show you. So, striped socks, that's my second pair of finished socks for the summer. And here are my wonderful Grello um, socks. I just loved this yarn so much. This yarn comes from an independent dyer in Canada, uh, Dye For You. And I've shown, I showed her card last time. And of course I've linked it on my um, Ravelry page. But she um, dyed the yarn and then showed some socks that had been knit up. And I just fell in love with the way her stripes work. And how crisp and clear the colors and the lines are. I mean they're just, it's just amazing. And then she posted um, some socks that somebody else had knit out of her yarn that had a textured pattern on the front, and I don't know what that pattern was, but I thought, oh, well, you know, I don't have to just do vanilla. So I tried um, a pattern, and I really love the way it looks. So this is Hermione's Everyday Sock pattern, which is also a free pattern on Ravelry for the texture, which I forgot to finish on the back, but, you know, that's okay. Um, you only know the texture usually on the... Um, top of the foot, not on the bottom of the foot where you walk. I'm a toe-up sock knitter, so I was in that habit. I put the line for the afterthought heel, and then I just kept going without thinking, oh hey, I could do the pattern all the way around. But I actually, I'm pretty much fine with just being able to see the pretty stripes in the back, and when I'm staring down at my feet, I see the pretty pattern in the front, and I was able to get them perfectly matched so that the stripes and everything are all the same. And the only other thing um, to tell you about these socks is that I had enough yarn left over to do the afterthought heel. And um, now it's just a matter of blocking them this gray by um, Coop Knit Socks, yeah. Uh, matches really well with the gray in the colorway here, which is called Ello Grello, um, by, again, by Dye For You. So, third pair of socks for the summer. And a mosquito is on my arm. Ah, go away, mosquito. I actually have a lot of uh, citronella candles left over from my son's wedding. Maybe I need to get one of those and light, light that. All right, so that's it for finished objects. Let's talk about works in progress. So, um, I went ahead and lit some citronella candles to try to maybe keep the mosquitoes away from me because there are a lot of them out here this evening, which is a little bit unusual to have this many mosquitoes. But I did want to show you, um, this is a giant citronella candle that was um, on the table at the rehearsal dinner for my son's wedding. The bridesmaids wore navy blue and they, had, they carried sunflowers and so yellow and gold, or gold and, and blue were sort of the colors of the wedding. So we had these nice big citronella candles on the tables um, during the rehearsal dinner, which kept the mosquitoes um, away, and that was very nice. Um, because the wedding was outside here at our, at, at our um, house, and we had a large tent, um, it was really lovely. Um, yeah, it was a really beautiful day. So, to move on to the knitting, um, I have two works in pro progress, pretty much. I did, at the beginning of the summer, my main focus was, was knitting on my um, daughter-in-law's wedding shawl, and I did make a small video about that, which has been posted um, two videos back now. Um, 
to go and see that. It was really beautiful. She loved it. It was blistering hot. It was too hot to wear the, the day of the wedding, which I knew it would be. But she had it, and she loved it. She's knitworthy, so that was good. So that meant that when it came time for um, summer projects, once that was out of the way, I, I just didn't, you know, there wasn't a whole lot of time left. So I did the sock knitting. It was convenient to take places and always have a sock on the go. But um, the other work in progress, which I talked about really extensively in the last video, is my Towns sweater. It is a Brooklyn Tweed pattern by Michelle Wang, I believe. And I showed you two finished sleeves last time. And so this I'm just showing you. I have started on the base of the sweater. And I have finished um, with this color, I think, which is, I think, called Snowbound. This is Brooklyn Tweed's Loft. This is Snowbound. I, you can see that the next color has been started. And I think I'm at the point where it's just now going to be solid that color for a while. So I'm making progress. It's slow. Um, and it will be slow going forward, but I'm hoping it's going to be finished this winter. Um, but the sleeves are done, so uh, with the sleeves being done and there's no button placket or anything because it's a pullover, I just need to go up, put the sleeves on, and do the top. So hopefully that'll go fairly quickly. It does require a bit of concentration, so it isn't the best knitting on the go project because you got to get these little, um, they're like pixels or these little dots. you got to get them in the right places. So that doesn't always make for the, the best TV knitting, but then you get to a place where it's just row after row after row of the same color, and so that, like here, could go pretty quickly. So this is still on the go, hopefully to finish by this winter. But at the moment, I stopped knitting that to knit my hat, my uh, middle son a hat for his senior year. So I've talked before about the scarf that I've been knitting him. During football season, I knit, when we watch the football games that, of the university he goes to, I knit on the scarf. Um, and it's a nice long scarf. And I asked him at the end of the junior year, I said, do you want me just to finish it off so you can wear it your senior year, or should I continue to knit it during the senior year and then you have this as an artifact? And he kind of decided that he really wanted it to represent the four years. Um, so that meant I felt like he needed something for his senior year. And his birthday's this weekend, so I'm trying to get this in the mail. And it looks like a cowl, but it's a hat. And when I put it on, it does just fit me, and I'm now at the closing, I think it's going to be a little more, it's going to have a little bit of a foof to it, which, um, but I think, um, I think it's going to be up fine, and I think it's going to fit him, but just laying down flat, and just, um, it looks kind of like a cow. So I'm at the upper, upper decreases. Um, this is called Beanie Wickerl. That's the pattern by Knit for Passion, I believe, is who it's by. Um, it's a paid-for pattern on Ravelry. But my son's university has these orange paw prints as their um, logo. So while the original pattern was just intended as a um, dog lover's pattern, they look a little bit like tiger paws. And so I've knitted it in his school colors. And then I threw gray and there's a contrast color. And I got enough yarn that I can knit his girlfriend one too if she likes it. My plan is to send this to him uh, this weekend. He's actually not around for his birthday um, at the university because he is going to present a poster at a conference um, in another state. So they left driving today. So if he didn't, he won't be home to know that the package didn't arrive on his birthday. So hopefully this weekend, finish this, get it blocked, packaged up with a happy birthday old man card in it. And he will then get back from his trip. They're gone a week. And have a little bit of love from mom to keep him 
warm this winter. So hopefully this will be a finished object and in the mail shortly. Again, it's the it's called Beanie Wickerl, and that's W-I-C-K-E-R-L um, by Knit for Passion, I believe. And I've shown in the pattern, and I said, hey, what do you think? Is it too cheesy, too... And he said, eh, a little cheesy, but I'd absolutely wear it. So I'm like, okay, you're going to wear it. And of course I'm going to knit it, because it makes me happy. Now, a couple things. One... There are some incredibly long floats, like 19 stitch floats on these things. I am not a color work expert, and most of the patterns I've done, the, the color work has been, you know, three, four, five stitch floats at most, and I do pretty well with that. So I don't know if I was not supposed to float it that long, if I was supposed to create a hundred little bobbins for, <laughs> for doing this. I don't really know. So if you're a color work person and you know something about long floats and how best to handle them, please leave me a comment or direct me where I might find out more information about it because like down here at the start of the at the base there's like 19 stitches in between. That's a really long float. And then second, I had the amount of yarn called for um, but I ran out of the purple. So that was a little bit of a puzzle. So this part up here at the top should have um, more color to it, but I think it'll be fine. I have a little bit of purple left, so I'm going to do this part in just the gray and the orange, and then once we get much tighter with the decreases, I'll add the purple back in so at the top you'll still have little streaks of purple in it, but that was a little bit of a surprise to run out of the yarn. I'm knitting the medium size, which at first I thought was going to be too tight, and then I was worried it's going to be too big, but if it fits my head, it'll fit his head just fine. I think we have similar sized heads. He also has a lot of, depending on if he's letting his hair go wild or if he's cutting it short because he's tired of it going wild, he has he can have a lot of bushy curly hair. So um, we'll see if he finds it too tight or too, too loose. But I thought I'd send it to him, have him try it on, and have his girlfriend try it on. And if she likes it enough and wants one, I can knit her one. Um, that is either matchy-matchy. Um, the purple I got for her hat is a shade lighter than this because they didn't have two balls of this purple, which is why I didn't use that purple to finish the purple with this one. So I could make it matchy-matchy or I could reverse it um, so that they can tell each other's apart, but at least then she can... Um, try it on and see if the medium size is the size for her because I think she might even probably want it small but it's been a fun knit um, and I think he's going to like it and he's going to enjoy it so that's what I've been up to um, it is the end of August in terms of my summer like I said I go back to work full time next week and so I don't know how often I will have the opportunity to podcast going forward. I hope I can get back once in a while, but I'm pretty sporadic with this. I thought this summer I might um, do more than I was able to do, but I did post a July episode just this week. And, part, and I had shot it before the wedding, and then there was wedding stuff, and then immediately to... Uh, Texas stuff and so I didn't get around to editing it or putting it up until this week so I don't know when I'll get this edited it, it may be maybe September before this one goes up but if it's September I hope yeah, I hope September is going well for you um, I'm gonna try to get it up quicker than that anyway as always thanks for stopping by and spending some time with me and um, chat with me um, through the comments I have um, a web page where I put all my show notes, but somehow I've been locked out of it. Um, I tried to merge some blogs together, and now I can't find the main blogs that I actually use. So I'm going to work that out. So the show notes for this may be slow, but everything I showed you is on my Ravelry page. So I'm on Ravelry as the flock. 
my blog that has the show notes is mamaflockknits.wordpress.com. And I am on Instagram as Willow Caroline. Long story behind that. I think I explained it in the very first episode I did. Um, but Willow Caroline on Instagram. And I do love Instagram. Um, don't post every day there, but I do enjoy Instagram a lot. So if you're curious what I'm up to, you'll likely see better pictures over there. All right. Happy end of summer wherever you are. Maybe it's end of winter for you. Um, but I hope you're looking forward to the transition into the new season. I know for much of Europe, it's been way too warm. I think we've had a pretty typical summer. It hasn't been too hot. It hasn't been exceptionally cool. I'm hoping it starts to cool off a little bit pretty soon. Um, and yeah, I hope the end of your summer is good. And, and as you transition to your next season, it goes well. Until next time, bye.